What's going on you guys? Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about dual battery systems. At some point you may consider getting auxiliary power, especially if you get off the beaten path and you don't want to run your starting battery down. So if you guys have hung out with me for a while, uh, you may know that I've been working on our Overland rig for a number of years, since about 2010. I put a lot of miles on it. We've been building it up very slowly and we are finally going to put in a dual battery system so that I have a starting battery and what's called a house battery for all of my accessories. That'll allow us to go out into the middle of no place for a number of days, maybe even weeks, without worrying about running down my starting battery. If you don't know who I am, if this is your first time here, my name's Michael and I started Overland Bound quite a few years ago. We have a worldwide community of overlanders and adventure travelers who are here to help you get out there, explore and do more, especially after last year. We want you to know how to get out into nature, connect with the great outdoors and go beyond the beaten path. So go and check that out. Now stick around, here's why. We're gonna to talk to Kevin at Lifestyle Overland, Brad with Trail Recon, and a couple of Overland Bound members that live near me to look at a variety of systems, and then at the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly which direction I'm gonna go in. All right, now let's catch up with my friend Kevin at Lifestyle Overland. Kevin, uh, awesome, awesome to catch up with you again, man. You too, man, it's been a long time. It's been a long time, it's been a crazy long time, like, two years or something since we were sitting around a campfire. Thank you for taking this call. Really appreciate it. I'm considering a dual battery setup for the very first time. Past time actually. It's <laughs> what was your what was your what was your first aha? Uh the big thing was the fridge. You know, we we started out with uh our dome tent and our air mattress and our igloo cooler and you know after about the third or fourth trip get tired of hearing that ice slosh around in that cooler and so that was one of the first pieces that we invested uh in upgrading and it's a downhill slope from there you know you start adding more loads <laughs> to the system and uh it grows exponentially from there if you want to go and spend a weekend three or four days somewhere go to the beach and you're just sitting there well then you're, you're getting in that position where you don't want to get up the next morning to, to head home and find that your battery is just completely flat there's some progressions that you can take and kind of one thing that we recommend to folks um, because what happens is, is they say, I want to get a fridge. What do I need to power it with? And you start talking about your dual battery system and it's just, you get this deer in the headlight look and, and you see the dollar sign says they're thinking, you know, another battery, uh, some way to mount the battery, uh, some way to link and delink the batteries, you know, a DC to DC charger. Um, and kind of what I do is I, I talk them down and I say, look, you don't have to jump that quickly. What you can do is just buy one of those little jump start packs. So if you do go on a camping trip and you find yourself flat in the morning, it's no big deal. You pull that thing out, you jump yourself off and you take off. So that's kind of, you know, step one, you get the fridge and you get the jump pack. Um, well, in the past we ran dual AGMs. We, we had the Odyssey batteries in our forerunner and, uh, used the basic blue C um charging link or, or disconnect those just depending on on how we wanted to run there's been so much advancements in lithium technology there's a lot of really cool out there now uh, to make controlling these different pieces on your system really really intuitive and really really easy i mean you could be in your tent pull out your phone and turn the lights off and on i mean it's that's how far we've come you know, one of the things that we landed on was was the red arc system you know we used the dc to dc charger in the forerunner and it was oh it saved us so many times especially when i was trying to edit on you know an inverter at camp and uh so having that extra juice was a was a big help and so and so they've sent us the red vision to manager 30 to, to test in the gx and so we're taking a different route we're we're also going to be utilizing a dakota lithium 100 amp hour battery but it introduces a lithium battery can't go in the engine bay due to temperature issues. And uh, so it's, it's changed our format. And, you know, you know, my background's electrical. I, I went through the IBEW apprenticeship program. I, I spent many years in trade. Um, and so this is kind of my forte. This is what I enjoy digging into. And so the more that I've uh, been planning and uh, drawing out this design, the more excited that I've, that I've gotten. 
So it sounds like you moved beyond, hey, I'm just powering a fridge. Um, I've done the, yeah. the, the, the dual AGM battery. Now I'm stepping up a little bit more to have some, mm -hmm. some refinements and, and also shed some, some weight. Did I say that? Yes. Did I summarize that? Okay. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good summary. We're, we're exploring the new tech and trying to light, lighten the load a little bit. When it comes to electrical, you know, from a safety standpoint, you know, make sure that your components are compatible. Make sure that your wire sizes are through them. Be cognizant of the, the risk of fire that you're adding uh, to your rig when you start manipulating these things. Um, and I highly recommend rather than tapping into the factory system, if there's a way that you can build a secondary auxiliary linked from an electrical or electronic connection, that's going to help you, especially if you have a new rig where you're wanting to maintain your warranty. Uh, it's another consideration to, to kind of keep on, yeah. on the uh, plate as well. Right on. Kevin, that's very good advice. Don't get, don't get overwhelmed. Don't underestimate the needs of your wire sizes and make sure your stuff yeah. is compatible. Very, very you good. Fire extinguisher. <laughs> and a fire extinguisher, right. Kevin, thank you. Uh, you know you can expect a call from me when I'm putting stuff together. Hey, anytime, buddy. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Kevin. <laughs> Um, Armin, thanks for inviting me over. Hey, no Very, problem. Uh, really appreciate it. So, no problem. Armin, I can help. Overland Bound, Overland Bound member, yep. um, saw a, a video on Instagram that I was doing about, hey, I want to build a dual battery system. Yeah. So, how did how did you? What was in your mind when you're like, what do I need? So, uh, Michael, thanks uh, yeah. for having the opportunity. Yeah, when yeah. I saw you, I can uh, I can show you this stuff. Basically, I'm on my I would say fourth generation. Everybody, I can just say, go get a fridge. It's a, it's a life changer as far as camping and whatnot is concerned, overlanding is concerned. Yeah. But you very quickly realize you need another battery. Okay, so this is, you've gone from a portable unit to an integrated system. Yes, yes. The system is integrated and now um, you guys are building another one. You and Ron are building another one for his vehicle yeah. and you've got the parts here. Yes, yes. Right. Yes. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at some of the parts. Okay. What, what goes into this thing? Okay. First, I mean, we kind of like made a plan to kind yep. of like lay this out. It's, it's, it's a very important part on the electrical to really get the wiring right and get the fusing right. Uh -huh. uh, there's two main reasons why you have fires on the, on the, on the Overland rigs. Yep. Electrical fires is one of them. So you wanna, you wanna right. basically take some extra care if you can, to all basically avoid that, and, right? And pro tip, uh, uh, vehicles don't burn halfway, ever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah. you don't want a fire to start. Yeah. You don't want an electrical yeah. fire to yeah. start. People underestimate wire gauge size. Yes. All the yes. time, right? Yes. Think yes. that a little tiny wire, oh, it's just yeah. 12 volts, a little tiny yeah. wire, and, and so no. they estimate no. the wire. We basically connect these things with, uh, with a unit that, that looks like this. This is a Red Arc BCDC um, uh, 1225 uh, charge controller. It does do a couple of things. It isolates the batteries in case um, your, your house battery runs low. It doesn't draw, the, uh, uh, doesn't draw the car battery down. So you can start Great. and get out of, away from the beach next morning if right. you have to. Right. right, so that's a key feature. Has a built-in solar charge controller, so you can uh, hook in your solar panels into it, and it does do the charge controlling. Yep. It uh, it allows different types of batteries. In this case, we use a lithium-ion battery, mm -hmm. fundamentally for weight and size reasons. Got so it. they're much more dense. So you have a much higher power density in, mm -hmm. a, in 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 these things. Okay, so basically, this thing sits between the batteries. By mm -hmm. the way including some heavy fuses because you run the long cables, these mm -hmm. heavy cables, yep. right? You don't want these to ground by accident. That's, that's where basically lots of amperage runs. Mm -hmm. So they basically, that's, that's important to have this stuff wired with the right wires and have it fused. And then out of the, uh, out of the auxiliary battery, we're basically running back into a spot system, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. you, you've, you've seen that mm -hmm. too. Um, it's, it's basically all the little like outlets, a little voltmeters, a couple of switches to control a, 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 a couple of things, a USB ports, 
kind of like to make it easy to you know, mm -hmm. recharge your iPhone mm -hmm. or whatever. And obviously, obviously the fridge. That's just a lot of wires. And the reason why it's a lot of wires, you just need to think two minutes about how many do you need, how long. And that typically, right. that, that's, that's, that's smaller wires that, you, that right. you use for that, right? Obviously, everything nicely sleeved. That's important in a separate... Wait, what's, what's this? That's a, oh. that's a, a sleeving here, I'll show okay. you. I'm going, to, I'm going to Amazon now. No, I'll show you here. Yeah. So right. what it happened in a car, that's why it looks a little bit better. But yeah. what really happens in a car, you have the rattling, right? Yep. And so even if you have a wire like that just sitting and it, it moves, eventually it rubs through. So you want to avoid that. So right. that's a one layer extra of Got protection. It. Yep. Got it. I might do... Con, you know, use the controllers on a day-to-day -day basis as long as it works, but have a fail-safe of using yeah. just like a simple solenoid to recharge my house battery Absolutely. if I need to. Absolutely. You know, just something really simple, Absolutely. right? Well, why don't we take a look at a couple of, uh, just point out a couple yeah. of the placement in, 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 in the Jeep and yeah. what, how we're going to build this out. Thank you, Ron. Right. So, Mike, what we have here, Ron has on his car basically an S pot. Ron, do you use your accessories with your with your phone, or you have it all switched up on the inside? You know, I bought two of the cheap ones online. Uh huh. They both broke, and I sent them back. I pulled everything out of the inside of there twice. Yeah. And then went back to the S pot. It's it's worth it again. Great. It's, yep. It's got the value. Okay. I just run the leads over to the battery to here, then run all your wires to one spot. Yep. So, uh, so Ron has built basically his own goose gear, mm -hmm. which is really, really that's cool. very cool. Great idea. Yeah, I, I stole that idea from him. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> anyway, so we we'll basically located the battery right behind the driver's seat, and then we have a little cubby hole here um, where, where we're basically going to put the uh, the, uh, the charge controller and uh, the fuses. The, the, so this is a really, it seems like a really efficient system for simple dual battery management, the ability to charge with okay. solar. Yes. You're running all your accessories off your house battery or your auxiliary battery, yes. Yes. protect your starter yes. battery. Yes. yes. That's cool. I wouldn't call it quite simple. There's probably one step lower where you don't have the complexity and whatnot, but right. this is probably a little bit right. more scalable. I mean, it's not complex. Yeah. Right. Thank you for running us through it. I think what I'll do is, if you don't mind, is um, we can exchange like uh, the components, information on the components. So if anybody wants to see what what your system, what you have, yeah, they can just yeah. look at the they can look at the components. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, Whatever you need. So that'll be well, that'll be useful for, to folks because that's yeah, yeah. that's what it comes right down to is is people will do their research and they'll say, hey, okay, cool, this solves that situation. They'll watch a video like this, they'll hear it run, they'll hear, hear your story, what you're trying to solve, and they'll go, hey, that's me. So what do I do? You know, and, and a list would be great for folks. Yeah. So, okay. Very cool. Thank you. Okay. Really appreciate it. Hey, Brad, thanks for, uh, thanks for accepting the call and taking the call uh, today. Appreciate it. Heck yeah, man. It's great to catch yeah. up with you, dude. It's been a while, man. It's been, it has been a, a crazy year and it's been a little while. We, we right. certainly need to hit the trail again. Uh, the, the topic today, what I wanted to get your, uh, bend your ear on is uh, dual battery setups, power management. Um, you know, what are some of the things you've considered? I'm making the leap. I'm going to do a dual battery setup or have some kind of auxiliary power. Um, what are some of the things you think of when it comes to auxiliary power? Uh, you know, for me, it's, I remember I started out with, uh, you know, we would go out and we just take an ice chest with me and I just got so tired of things getting waterlogged. And, and so I wanted to do a fridge, but then when you have a fridge, you need power, right? And so uh, for me, it was, I just started carrying a portable, um, at the time it was an AGM battery uh, around uh, and I've since upgraded to a lithium battery. But the things that I look for when it comes to battery management is one, uh, what's the convenience of it? And so, uh, you know, whether you're in, if you're installing something, there's, there's some things to think about if you're installing something like, where am I going to put that battery? Uh, how much is it going to cost? How much uh, extra accessories to manage it and to run power from here to there? Am I going to need, uh, wh where's the space going to be? Uh, do I have a place to put it? If you're going to install like an AGM battery under the hood, uh, you know, many, many vehicles have options for that. Uh, or if you're going to do like a lithium install, then you've got to put that 
you know, in your storage in the back somewhere, you've got to find a place for that. Uh, so that's got to take into consideration. I'm still using a portable uh, power system. And yeah. for me, it's nice because uh, I can just take that from vehicle to vehicle to vehicle and it right. works. And, and it has, the one I have now has about 140 amp hours, which I mean, I can run that, I can run the fridge and charge my camera gear for about five days without doing anything, without charging it, without solar. And so I think having something that has enough capacity that's convenient for you uh, is, that's, that's the important piece. Right. Was the, um, w- was uh, uh, refrigeration, was that a kicker for you where you were like, hey, I, now it looks like I need auxiliary power. Was that the thing? Uh, yeah, that and the camera gear, right? So I was right. figuring out how to charge camera gear when you're on the on the road, when you're out for multiple days. Uh, you know, I would have batteries plugged into the little tiny receptacle and all my USB ports that I had. And, and so I just, I needed something. And when the fridge came along, it was like, hey, all right, it's time to, it's time to make the jump here. I, yeah. I do think, I think portable is a is a good practical solution for people mm-hmm. uh, because it, because some of the portable solutions out there are actually pretty inexpensive, mm-hmm. um, but I, but I honestly I think for me for the for the Wrangler diesel I will probably do a built in um, battery management system um, because I, I the system that I have now is about this big and I think I right. can condense it down and tuck it into underneath you know some goose gear lithium batteries come in multiple sizes and so I'll probably do something like that in the future. Got it. So an integrated system versus a portable system. Yeah. Got it. You know, it's funny, like uh, when I go uh, camping with folks, they they don't appreciate me running the 80 series at night to charge all my stuff. (laughs) What else should I be thinking about? You know, I'm a fan of figuring out what other people have done and has worked for them. And so I, I encourage people, if they're considering it, don't don't try to recreate the wheel. Somebody has probably already come up with a great solution and and do that. I, you know, I think uh, a good management system is super important. I mean, we talk about batteries all day long, but um, knowing how much power you have and making sure that that's usable power and then you can charge it quickly. Uh, I mean, charging it quickly is 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 pretty important, especially if you're charging on the road all the time. So, hey, Brad, I know you are packing to get out of town. You're leaving at ODAR 30 tomorrow morning. So I'll let you get back to that. I appreciate you hopping on the call and giving me your insights. Always, always, uh, always helpful. Thank you. Yeah, buddy. Thanks a lot, man. It's great talking to you and good luck with your install, man. All right. Thanks a lot. All right, buddy. Now you guys, there's no way to put this simply. The considerations are almost unlimited. So I'm just going to tell you which direction I've decided to go and I'm gonna give you some of the reasons why. First, I'm not gonna go lithium. I'm gonna go with standard uh, AGM batteries. I'm going to have a duplicate of my current battery on the other side of the engine compartment. It's gonna be a dual AGM system. There's a couple of reasons for me why that's important. One, I wanna have another battery that matches my current starting battery. If I need it and it stays charged up, I can use that other battery to start. You're not really supposed to use a lithium battery to start your motor. You can do it, and of course you would, but it's really not what it's made for, and it's not good for the battery. Another thing, I can wire my battery systems in series and create a 24 volt system, which will give me enough power to do some welding, some stick welding, if I absolutely need to when I'm off the grid. The AGM battery is more resilient to heat. It can freeze, it can be hot, and lithium batteries are more subject are more sensitive to heat. That's a big decision. Please look at lithium. It might be the best solution for you. Now, in terms of battery management, there are a few things I want. Um, I want to be able to charge with with uh, shore power, what's called shore power, which is 110 volts. I want to be able to charge with solar power, and of course I want to be able to charge with my vehicle charging system. So there are three sources of power. What that means is I need a battery management system in order to take that power in correctly and intelligently charge my battery. We're getting into some details, but what does that mean intelligently charge the battery? Well, so the AGM batteries have a certain charging profile that they prefer and a, a management, a battery charging management system will allow me to charge it so that that battery has a longer lifespan. Batteries are expensive. You don't want to charge them incorrectly and half 
their lifespan. You wanna have as much life out of that battery as possible. So I do need a manager. The other thing I have to do is isolate my starting battery from the rest of the system. I want all of my accessories to be drawn from the house battery, not my starting battery, and I need to isolate that from the accessory system. So the one system that does all of that is the Red Arc Manager 30. That's the direction I'm gonna go. It also gives me plenty of room to grow into. Let's be clear, it's overkill. It is overkill for my needs. It can support multiple batteries. It does all kinds of great things, but it's a system I can grow into, and the folks at Red Arc gave me a lot of great advice about that. I'm also gonna add to it the Red Arc Red Vision system. Now, that's not a requirement. You don't need to do that, but it does a bunch of things that are awesome. One, it makes it very easy to add additional accessories. Two, it allows you to monitor uh, your battery systems through a fantastic interface. And three, it's got an app that allows you to do things from your phone. This brings up an important point. I'm also gonna build into my system the ability to turn all that off. And the reason is because that's a lot of solid state technology. And yes, it is very reliable, but in the event that anything happens, I wanna be able to bypass that and use either my house battery or my starting or my primary starting battery to start my engine so that I have a secondary backup. And if something goes wrong with the accessory system, I just wanna be able to bypass it. And also with a solenoid, charge my house battery with a basic connection. So that's gonna be part of the build as well. Okay, so here's what you guys have in store. You guys, like and subscribe, things of that nature, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a whole build. A new center console, it's gonna house the Manager 30 and the Red Vision system, and also make it easy for me to access all of that wiring and have cup holders. Now, Parnell, if you're watching, I haven't called you because, you know, it's a custom thing. You help me so much with the drawer system build, I don't wanna impose. You guys, go and see our drawer system build series if you guys are considering drawer, drawers, a drawer system for yourself. Thank you, Armin, thank you, Ron. Brad at Trail Recon, please go and check out his channel. A lot of great content for you to learn even more. And thank you, Kevin at Lifestyle Overland. Go and check out his YouTube channel as well. Thanks, all of the advice, really very much appreciated. That's one of the great things about the Overland Bound community is that they will help you answer your questions so you can decide what's right for you. So coming up, custom center console, battery power management system. You guys, go to storeoverlandbound.com, become a member. We do have an app, it's called Overland Bound One on iOS and Android. Connect with the community, get out this summer. We look forward to seeing you out there on the trail. All right, outfit and explore.